This is the Defenders Podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We're back with our final episode looking at Marvel 616. This time it's episode 8, Spotlight. Welcome back, fellow Defenders, to the Defenders Podcast on TV Podcast Industries, talking Marvel over here on the TV Podcast Industries. I'm one of your hosts, Derek, and we're here talking about Marvel 616 Spotlight, the final episode of the documentary series. Yeah, hello there, fellow Defenders. I'm one of your other hosts, John. This is a good finale for this season. Absolutely. Uh, This is awesome. It's not what I was expecting. Not at Uh, all. At all. Yeah. Like um, I saw like, the description of it and I thought, and I saw yeah. plays and I saw, you know, a, a different look at Marvel and uh, how the comic characters are being used. And I totally thought we were going to be seeing the, uh, there's a live spectacular that was touring uh, in the world when touring existed, uh, where we had loads of Marvel characters, think the Spider-Man. Uh, exactly. Spider-Man one. I thought this was very much going to be a Broadway thing for sure. Exactly. But, but it turned out to be a school play effectively. Yeah. Um, really interesting idea that to take a look at this way, there's loads of documentaries that seem to be based around uh, around high school um, with high school sports teams or, or with cheerleading squads, that kind of stuff. Um, it's interesting to take a look at Marvel through the eyes of teenagers and, and seeing them uh, try and look at these characters, some big characters from the Marvel Universe. Yeah, and, and I, I, I think there's a great nostalgia as well to it because, uh, as I say, you know, most unexpected episode for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually found it really affecting rooting for the students mm-hmm. getting through um the i i suppose the theatrical process you know they they run through the the whole thing yeah it, it's based at Brandon High School in Florida around two classes of the drama teacher Miss mm-hmm. Courtney um and their their build up you know um it, it's really running through the whole um thing from auditions to casting to rehearsals to rehearsals without script, dress rehearsals, costume fittings, really dealing with those, um, the, the pressures that they have, mm-hmm. uh, asking for advice from, uh, the drama teacher, uh, and, you know, the performance nerves, the pre-performance nerves and the performance. And I, I thought this was, yeah, really a- affecting look actually. And, you know, one of the class, I think, she, um, I think Miss Courtney, uh, called it a tier one class they were kind of new to drama yeah. and they were looking at miss marvel and then there were the tier two and three classes and uh, looking at squirrel girl and they had you know experience in previous productions yeah uh, and but you like you could tell I the think, difference between the two classes certainly especially you know a first class doing something remember on camera the whole time as well so you know for these kids doing the play itself is a lot of pressure but you know, they knew the cameras were on them the whole time as well. So they've got quite a lot of, a lot of difficult things to, to deal with doing this for this first class. The second class seemed much more comfortable, um, doing the play, uh, and much more comfortable doing their rehearsals and that kind of stuff. But obviously a lot of the drama is from a group of people who've never done a play like this. Uh, but also added to that, I'm sure, was the documentary that was going on filming them, filming them. Um, what I did really like about it is there was no specific moment like you would expect from this where it's, and this person ended off, this is how this person got a role in a Marvel movie, or this is how this person got a role in the Broadway production of this, or something like that. There was no breakout star of everybody that was in here. It was genuinely just high school kids trying out for the school play, getting their part, learning their lines, and the end result is, did they learn something from their experience of doing the acting, yeah. doing this particular play? It didn't feel like it was overselling anything here. It felt like a real experience these kids it were It felt like through. a school doing a school syllabus yeah. of which this, in a, in effect, was outside of the syllabus. Maybe it gave extra credit. It did, yeah. yeah. Um, like being part of the sports team yeah. and so on. And I, I thought it was just really good because I, I suppose one of the things, it, it focused around Marvel Spotlight plays that have been created to help draw interest in the theatre. Mm-hmm. So it actually it's more about getting interest in the theatre than, say, Marvel, yeah. but it's using Marvel characters um, and effectively trying to pitch it so it shows that you know they are going through what regular kids also go through it's just that they're heroes in a a comic book but it's trying to show 
that um you know and again it comes back to that mirror versus window like we talked about it trying to put something of you into the character that you create or you yep. write about and some of that can go back to to school anxieties mm-hmm. and so and how you overcame them or how this character overcomes them from your own experience so it, it really feeds into that um like there's there's a really nice quote from uh, a girl called Brie who's doing Miss Marvel she's she's playing Kamala Khan mm-hmm. she says you know once she becomes herself she becomes accepted and you see that that speaks to to these kids because you know they're growing up they're finding out about themselves and yeah. i thought that was really uh, really nice you know yeah. uh, i think the squirrel girl was about um you know making friends in, in this case it's that Doreen green uh, squirrel girl takes tippy toes to college her squirrel um but that she also wants human friends and it's about making those friends and trusting your friends against modok effectively and it was well, trusting your friends with your secrets when you're moving on from yeah high and school it, to college yeah it's like a, a really i have good. to say they really seemed to focus on things that did affect the kids and you could see what they're learning from it loved the fact that there was no moment in here where you see them going the kids going oh i love this character in the comic books i've read all the comic books um this is my favorite character you didn't get any of that no, in here. this was all. purely about a stage production in fact it didn't need to be marvel at all no um but it was a really well done documentary um should point out the documentary on this one the person who directed the documentary here was alison brie um Alison yes. Brie, well known for her role on Community, uh, also on Glow, um, where she directed a few episodes of that series as well, as far as I remember. Um, but this is the first documentary that she's done. We also saw earlier on in the series another member of the cast of of Community did uh, did an episode which we both loved the uh, the um, episode about the women of Marvel, effectively. Um, so really interesting seeing that uh, that we have another person from Community. Uh, coming over to the Marvel yeah. Universe in some in some form. But she really found her story here. That's what I found most interesting. Uh, this is something that we've been saying about documentaries. When you, when you find the story in amongst all of the footage that you're doing of everything that's going on, when you find this good through line, it makes a great documentary. And I think she really did. I think Alison Brie did a great job. Here. Yeah, and, you know, she she pulled out some backgrounds from some of the kids, uh-huh. like Brie and Eerie and Jamal in um, the Miss Marvel play, um, you know, the dealing with anxiety, yeah. dealing with being kind of adopted or, and, um, how, you know, and, and you see the teacher as well. Um, I, I thought she was really fab. And right at the end, she's kind of choking up uh, and you mm-hmm. kind of the with her a bit because you're thrilled that the students have gone through this, this whole process. And as she says, uh, Miss Courtney, that the students learned something about themselves. She has this great, thing about you know if you teach maths you can see whether they get the answer right yeah you can see um in, in their test score as to whether they've progressed mm-hmm. um or, or their coursework because you know th- there's a bit of black and white there with with the drama it's about their self-confidence how they work as a team yeah. how they interact with other people so it's more qualitative it's more of a yeah. it's like that's social skills that yeah. you that you find and i thought um really i thought it was really that, yeah. really good yeah she was a really proud teacher yeah. helping uh, these these kids and i think um I think it, my, it my really f- made me smile absolutely to be honest. i think my absolute favorite moment uh, of the whole episode was when uh brie is doing her final kind of run through uh, on stage as miss marvel and she shouts out to the teacher can i just have one last look at my lines the teacher says no get back to your place yeah, exactly. We're moving on. I told you today it was a day without books kind of thing or without the script, you know. I, I just love that it's like this is what this is how you learn. You know, this is these are the things and if you fail, if you fall down, if you don't get your get your lines right, you don't know exactly your lines, um improvise. Say what, you know, do what you do here. And you see that being reflected with uh, Maddie who plays Squirrel Girl in, yeah. in the other play. You see that she's certainly learned that. She's saying when I lose my line, I think what would I say if someone said that to me in this situation? Then spout back something that I would say, and that'll get me back on track. You see, she's learned that from the from the exactly original, and uh, understanding, yeah. getting to know your character. Yeah. Um, I thought was really, really good, and that's it, Maddie. You know, from the Squirrel Girl, it was this idea. You know, when she saw the the script, when she saw the comics, saw that, um, you know, Squirrel Girl 
wasn't some idealized female shape and, and she felt she could relate to that. Yeah. And you had Joey who was Modoc and um, struggling to get absolute perfection with his lines yeah. and, and really being told by the teacher to, you know, to improvise, to, to, to try and just make that break. And it was all coming from him having to uh, learn Bible passages mm. as a kid, but to the exact words. And getting uh, punished if he didn't or, get the Otherwise words he got punished. Yeah. And it, so it was really, really uh, interesting look about the kids involved in the production, the teacher, the school, and the the plays. And I, I thought this was really good. I definitely recommend this. It's one that I was not expecting, as I said. Yeah. Um, and it, it was all the better for it, I felt. Mm-hmm. Um, an honourable honorable mention to carl who is the awesome technical artist uh involved in this i mean you, you didn't really get to see much of the behind the scenes people yeah. but in in carl the the technical artist <laughs> and his tree i, I thought girl. he was phenomenal just that moment when you catch him first and he's lying on the floor <laughs> going well i have nothing to do because i'm supposed to be making my tree and i can only make my tree at home because there's a lot of power tools here so he's just lying <laughs> on the floor yeah. saying he's just doing nothing else right so and then you, you catch up with them later on <laughs> with the tree in two pieces saying well that still has to be painted it's not really a tree right now because most trees aren't in two pieces uh love <laughs> love yeah. carl great little moment uh to pull out and i think again um I'll give a compliment to Alison Brie for this. This is something that she clearly had footage of loads of people involved in this that she could have used. But uh, Carl's a nice representation of not everybody is exactly on the same wavelength uh, when you're doing a production like this. Carl has his focus and he wants to get it done as well. So, uh, yeah, really cool. Yeah, it was very, very cool. A really lovely um, episode um, following these students on on a journey. I thought it was excellent. That was a little uplifting episode, wasn't it? I think we all need a little bit of uplifting and we've been already criticized for uh, enjoying a, a lot of uplifting stuff at the moment, but I think we all need it. So, so watching this, there was a couple of tears, uh, when hearing some of the stories about some of the kids that, that some of the kids had gone through and ha- what got them to, uh, this particular class in, in Brandon High. Um, there's some really uh, sad things that have happened to these kids considering their young age, I suppose, as well. But, uh, overall, this, whole story felt really uplifting by the end of it really yeah, enjoyed it definitely yeah. um so please check out um episode eight of marvel yeah. 616 you can check out the whole series or you can check out any of the episodes we've covered yeah. um hopefully the bite-sized uh, approach we've taken just gives a nice little flavor of the overall episodes yeah. and of course this is our last episode of this series uh, but we will be back uh, with WandaVision Absolutely. on January the 15th with maybe a little sprinkling of some additional episodes in between. <laughs> We've just done eight additional episodes that we weren't planning to do because, hey, look, it's a documentary series. We were excited about Marvel. Why not? There is also supposed to be a documentary series uh, coming out on the week before uh, One Division, uh, so you may have already seen it. Uh, it's a documentary series called Marvel Studios Legends, where they're going to catch you up on the characters that are going to be featured in the Marvel Disney shows. We may do an episode about that documentary. We may not. It just depends on the content of it, really. If it's nothing new, if it doesn't give us any uh, new information, or if it's something that we're not really too interested in covering, we probably won't. But we may do one more documentary episode before uh, One Division comes out on January 15th. Thanks so much for joining us, though, for this uh, this run through Marvel 616. Yeah, and thank you so much for your support. Uh subscribing over at tvpodcastindustries.com or on any good or evil podcast catcher of your choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, rate us, leave a review, or you can support us by subscribing to our patron over at patreon.com forward slash tvpodcastindustries. We are also on Facebook. We're at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash TV podcast industries Mm -hmm. where we'll be putting up our spoiler posts and commenting posts uh, for one division um, on January the 15th to, to marry it in with our podcast coverage of the one division series. Yes. And we'll be recording our podcast for one division the day after the episode airs. So hopefully a bit of time for you to get your thoughts in after each time you've watched these episodes. 
Yeah, thanks. We're looking forward to hearing your feedback and hopefully you've enjoyed uh, th- our thoughts about this documentary series and these quick mini-sodes. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us, fellow defenders. Brandon High School, um, they their teams were called the Eagles, so all I can say is go Eagles. Um, Absolutely. And remember, keep watching, keep listening, and keep defending. Bye. Bye. Bye.